Well, I think obviously over the last sort of uh, six to eight months, uh, when uh, the players came out of uh, the skipper season, sort of back end of September, October, uh, there was a number of players who were already in the squad and there was a number of players that I'd seen playing uh, either skipper rugby or, or potentially in some local tournaments. Um, and uh, they were sort of uh, added to the squad and came through sort of back end of uh, November into December to play in a number of tournaments here in Fiji. Um, got to look at some uh, and saw some others playing who have then subsequently come into the, the group as well. So, um, you know, it's benefits of being able to play good sevens rugby here in Fiji has given me the opportunity to see some more players. Um, that has enabled me to have, you know, a longer period of time to see their development and work with them, see how they fit into the team. Um, and, you know, we sort of get towards the 18 that will travel to Australia, New Zealand um, on the back of what has been a bit of a tough period, as you say, with the, the second uh, outbreak of COVID here in Fiji. And, um, you know, now we, what we really need to do is take uh, some of the training that we had done following the, the series of events that we had done here in, in, in Fiji uh, and play against international teams. And uh, we get that opportunity going into um, the back end of June. Yeah, well, you know, obviously when they first come in to our environment, it's very different than, than what they've done previously. Although some may have been in the academy or some may have played for teams here in Fiji, be it 15s or 7s. But, you know, there's a way that you do things and there's an expectation and accountability to being in the 7s environment. And, you know, very much in the early stages of being in here, that's what you find out and that's what you have to work around. So, you know, be that on the field uh, with the trainings that we do, uh, the behaviours that we expect uh, and, you know, the, the way that they have to conduct themselves as players, um, you know, tells you a lot about whether they can take uh, the pressure and the stress of, of being under the scrutiny of being an international rugby player. And above all, you know, is, is the talent that they have enough for them to continue developing? Uh, do they have the right attitude in wanting to learn and develop as well? And ultimately those seven, as you said, that um, have not been outside of, uh, of not played in international competition previously, have earned that right by the way that they've conducted themselves here in in a professional environment. You have you have people in the country who have had that experience, and you know, I mean, if you look at the New Zealand team or South African team, there's you know they they they've got a whole host of experience that run through their teams, and you know, we slight go at it slightly differently, and we know the talent that can come up very quickly in Fiji, and. You know, I'm always conscious of that, but giving them the best opportunities to to have a stage development process. Um, but, you know, when you've got people of Kali and Kitty's experience and knowledge, um, that then can help not just themselves, but others around them to understand and develop their game. So, um, yeah, it, it, it's important. I mean, Kitty has, you know, a particularly high skill level when it comes to certain aspects of the game, but there's areas of the game that he needs to work on and continue working on to warrant being in that, that 13. So, you know, there's no, there's no guarantees on that. Um, Cali has, has trained particularly well, has worked on himself, has sacrificed a lot um, to, to get him where he needs to. He's had to put in extra trainings to get that because he hasn't had the, the game time that some of the others have done. Um, and it's great to see him, you know, back to his his leading best uh, in training sessions, uh, not just uh, in the field of play, but also when it comes to conditioning sessions, and and leading the players on on the standards that are necessary in the group. We're blessed to have been able to play tournaments here in Fiji, um, and and it, obviously it's progressed us as a group, but that came to us, you know, a sharp halt. Uh, some sort of two to three months ago when, when we were all sort of feeling the first effects of this second wave. Um, so what you try and do is, is, is keep the players moving and, and keep them continuing their development after that. That's been, it's been hard because, you know, we've been in lockdown, we've been in isolation and, you know, it's tough, uh, you know, for the players to miss their families and not be with their families for long periods of time. And, and now we're going over the, over to Australia and they won't see them again. And, you know, that takes its toll. Um, but, 
equally, you know, when we play against Australia and New Zealand, um, what I'm looking for is a measure for us, not necessarily what Australia and New Zealand are doing. How are we progressing? What are we doing? What do we need to work on coming out of that tournament? You know, it's going to be a tough tournament. We don't know where we're at at this point in time. And, you know, every intention of winning each game that we play, but those games will only be played if we're getting things right individually and collectively. Um, and that's what we've got to go and see because ultimately... There's six performances that I'm concerned about. Um, and, you know, obviously the Australian New Zealand um, opportunity gives us a, a springboard to do that. Yeah, we, we, we get closer to those dates. We, we will train in our quarantine. We have a special quarantine in, in Australia. We get three days of hard lockdown. And then following that, we're able to train. Um, and that's the reason that we we took this on. And it's been a you know huge effort on behalf of the Australian government, uh, the Fijian government, uh, Fiji Airways themselves, and obviously the FRU and DFAT. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're extremely fortunate that we, we, we are able to go and do this and quarantine. If we'd have had to have two weeks solid quarantine, it just wouldn't have been possible.